All right, today is a very unfortunate day for my brother-in-law, and we are at his house, and it is a Sunday, so physio never stops. And the reason I'm here today is because he has gone and ruptured his left Achilles tendon, which is very unfortunate. Did it at soccer yesterday, now we diagnosed it yesterday, and today we are gonna show you what has happened as far as what is going on with the Achilles, when you see an Achilles rupture, how it presents and how to test it, and then what we're gonna do about it over the next few days. So if you come and have a look at this, come over here, Harry. So this is his right Achilles tendon. Now, Phil's six foot seven, he's got size, what, 16 feet? 16 feet, he's got big feet, so don't you know get put off how big this is. But look at the Achilles tendon on the right hand side, okay? This is the size of his Achilles tendon here, okay? Which is normal Achilles going here. If you look at this left one, can you see, this is day two, the difference in size of that. So this is gross effusion and swelling from a rupture of that Achilles tendon. And you can see, if I look at this, there's the tendon here, it gets fatter and fatter and fatter to the point which is about here, right in that mid substance between the heel and so that mid part of the Achilles. So that's where he's gone and ruptured. Now, with a squeeze test, what we're gonna test is a squeeze test. Now, on the right calf, which is a good one, if you watch the foot, when I squeeze his gastroc here, his foot will move. So if you watch this, I'll squeeze his gastroc, can you see how his foot moves? And I'll let it go, foot moves again. So I squeeze that, he goes into plantar flexion. Now the reason that is, is because obviously this gastroc is connected to the Achilles tendon, the Achilles goes right down and connects the heel. So mechanically, if I pull on his Achilles this way by squeezing his calf, it pulls the heel, which plantar flexes his foot. Now when you have a rupture, obviously there's a disconnect between the Achilles and this. So this is one of the first tests we go for to see if people have ruptured the tendon or they've just sprained the Achilles or done a mild tear. If you watch this foot, okay, and already can you actually see how this one's sitting in plantar flexion and this one's not? Can you see that? So this one, if you come from this side, Harry, See how he's in dorsiflexion there. Can you see this plantar flexion here? So he's got a natural tone of the Achilles pushing it up. So that's an indication straight away that he's done something wrong there. Now, if you watch this one, I'm gonna squeeze his left calf. You watch what happens to his foot. Absolutely nothing. Let's have a look at the right one again. Moves, squeeze his left, watch again. Absolutely nothing. Now, that's a bad thing, okay? Meaning a positive finding that there's no connection here or such a minimal connection that when I squeeze this, it does not pull on this tendon. So either that's a full complete rupture in half or it's so far through that you most likely need surgery, which is an unfortunate thing for him. Now, Phil did this playing soccer and when you rupture Achilles, it goes pretty quick. And what he felt was a pop there. He actually heard, did you hear a pop? Yeah. yeah, he heard a pop, but it wasn't really that painful. And when he came home, he couldn't walk well at all. I mean, he felt like, oh, I've done my Achilles. But the thing was, it wasn't that painful. And the reason why it wasn't that painful is because when those tissues pop and went so quickly, bang, they pop, the two ends are not touching each other. So there's not much, too much pain going there. If you had ruptured something and it was sort of half a rupture, then that pulling, every time you walk, would be really, really, really sore. So people say, oh, it's not too bad, it wasn't too sore but that's actually a bad thing because it means it's all the way through and that means it's, he's probably gonna go for surgery on that. Um, some people, when they rupture their kidneys, it goes like a real gunshot. You hear it and they feel like someone's kicked them in the leg. So if they're playing soccer and they're running around, they go, oh, who kicked me? And they look around, there's no one there. And that's because it feels like someone's just whacked you in the back of their kidneys because when it, when it ruptures, um, that's the feeling they get. For him, he's going to obviously rest that. It's day one, if you like. Um, the thing we're going to work on is getting him in for an ultrasound straight away because if he's ever going to see a surgeon this week, he'll need an ultrasound scan. So that'll be the first thing on Monday is getting an ultrasound scan. We're also going to get him into a full length moon boot or walker boot. Now, the reason for this is, right, he's done the damage, right? He's not going to be able to, you know, go and run around on this, okay? But he can't even really walk very well. Because of that connection there, he's limping hard to walk. Now this thing here is going to give him the ability to walk around the house because he's got to go to work next week, he's got to walk around the house, he can still drive because it's his right leg is obviously the foot 
and the brake, pedal in the brake, and it's his left leg he's done, and he's got an automatic, so he's okay. But he'll need that to get around the house, he'll need that to be mobile. Plus, it gives a really good compression, and we put it on before, and it was a, one of the best things because he could actually move around a lot better, a lot more comfortable, a lot more competent, and a lot more confident. So that's Phil's ankle. That's Phil's Achilles. What we're gonna do over the next few months is follow his progress and track him through. I'll show you his ultrasound scan result, um, and then once we speak to the surgeon, we'll update you on what's happening, and then we'll follow his progress after rehab.